using my DMM to measure current. I want to measure voltage using my V meter. Now, the power supply itself on the EE board will actually display voltage and current, as will most power supplies. Generally, you do not want to believe the power supply 100% when it is displaying these values. Sometimes it will give you a value that it thinks is giving, but some of that energy could be dissipated within the power supply itself, so always double check your measurements. Now let's go to the waveform software and apply power to this circuit. The only power supply I need is VP+, all the others are disabled. I'm going to start out by applying one volt to this. Turning on power, <clears throat> getting about a tenth of an amp. Let me reset my DMM. So my DMM is giving me about 90 milliamps. My voltage is about one volt. That provides me with one piece of data, voltage versus current. I can acquire more data by changing the voltage. If I apply 2 volts, my DMM is now telling me that I have about 0.18 amps. My voltage across the resistor is about 1.98 volts. I can select additional voltages to get additional points on my voltage current characteristic. I would tend to get 5 to 6 points at least so that you can do some statistical analyses on these data. Now let's take a look at a qualitative plot of this type of data and how to analyze it. We won't use the actual data points, that's your job in the lab assignment, but I'll show you roughly what you can expect. Now conceptually what we will be doing is plotting voltage versus current data for the resistor. If I put current on my horizontal axis and voltage on my vertical axis, and then I measure some voltage current value, that gives me a point on what should be the voltage current characteristic for this resistor. If I measure another point, okay, now two points define a straight line, I can draw a straight line through these points. The slope of that will be the resistance R. The problem is that two points exactly define a straight line with no uncertainty whatsoever. However, we have no feeling as to whether these points are in error or not. We can do a better job if we acquire additional data, even though that data may not lie exactly on our line. So now we have additional data to decide what the best straight line is that will fit through this. So our straight line may not actually pass through any of the points, but it may give us the best feeling overall as to what our resistance value actually is. A least squares best fit is one way to decide what this straight line slope should be. Now, you can also get an idea as to how much spread there is or how much uncertainty there is in this straight line estimate by calculating a correlation coefficient. That is our R value. Remember, an R of 1 means that all of this data lies exactly on the line. An R of 0 means that there is essentially no straight line that can accurately be drawn through the data. The next part of this lab assignment examines some resistor nonlinearities. As I mentioned previously, all physical devices are nonlinear to some extent. For the most part, in our lab assignments, we will assume that our resistors are linear devices. However, in this particular section of the lab, we want to take a look at these as nonlinear devices. So what we're going to do is apply enough voltage to the resistor to cause the resistor to dissipate more power than it is actually capable of dissipating. We will burn out the resistor. This will cause the resistor to behave nonlinearly if we plot the voltage versus current characteristics in this nonlinear regime. They will not necessarily lie on a straight line and they will certainly not lie on the same straight line as the resistor characteristics will be on during its linear operating regime. The next part of this assignment is to take the same circuit that we used previously, our same 10 ohm resistor, but now apply enough voltage to this resistor so that it starts to operate nonlinearly. Now we're going to go ahead and plot the nonlinear data and see that a straight line does not necessarily match well between the linear and the nonlinear regi regimes. Okay, so let's apply a bunch of voltage to this resistor.
Okay, we're now applying power to the resistor. We have about a half of a volt applied to it. Our DMM indicates that we're getting about 50 milliamps. If we increase this voltage, say up to 4 volts, we're now getting about 4 volts across the resistor, 3.98 volts, and about 0.37 amps. We're starting to dissipate a fair amount of power through this resistor. This resistor isn't going to like that. As we continue to increase this voltage, we'll notice that the voltage current data starts to agree less and less with the straight line that we got from small voltage values. In fact, the resistor is getting hot and it's starting to smoke. Okay, this is now well into a nonlinear regime. I'm going to keep on increasing the voltage. Okay, keep doing that until you feel tired of it or until you become overcome by the fumes. Then stop. Now we previously acquired and plotted some data here for fairly low voltages. And we fit a straight line through this data and calculated a resistance R based on that data. And most of these data points should lie fairly close to this line. This is essentially linear operation. Now as we start applying more and more current to this, the data that we get is no longer going to lie along this straight line. It may start to fall off or maybe be way above this line. Okay, so this straight line that we used does not approximate well the actual data that we're getting. We're now in a nonlinear operation. And Ohm's law no longer applies. V is equal to IR is not appropriate way out in here. The final part of this lab assignment is to implement an overall system. Our system is going to be essentially a dusk to dawn light. We have a little light that we want to turn on when it gets dark outside. Now our overall system is going to be run by a photoresistor. A photoresistor is a device whose resistance changes with ambient light level. So if we take a look at the circuit schematic shown here, we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor in series with a photoresistor. If we do KVL around that outer loop, we can see that the voltage between the 10 kilo ohm resistor and the photoresistor changes as the resistance of the photoresistor changes. Now we can use that change in voltage to perform the process that we want to perform. If we apply that voltage to the base of a BJT, we can use that voltage to turn a v BJT on or off. That BJT can then be used to provide power to our light, which consists of an LED or a light emitting diode. So in this overall circuit, once we wire it up, we'll see that when the room gets dark, the voltage at the BJT will go high and the LED will light up. When the room is light, the LED will go out. Now let's take a look at operation of our dusk to dawn light. I'm using VCC to apply 5 volts to this resistor, which then connects to this photoresistor. I'm also applying the same 5 volts to the collector of the BJT. The emitter of the BJT is connected to this LED. Both the LED and the negative terminal of the photoresistor are tied to ground. The intermediate point where this 10 kilo ohm resistor and the photoresistor are connected is applied to the base of the BJT. As this voltage goes high, this light should turn on. Covering up the photoresistor should cause this voltage to go high. So if I cover this up and make it dark, my light goes on. Applying light to the ambient area turns the light off. 